Hi guys, Andrew Bull here, aka Zantra's Andrew Adventures, and guess what I've got here today? This is Exodus, the trading card game's new booster box, The Dimension That Disappeared. And look at this thing! If there's been any complaint that some of the uh, Exodus players uh, who do the uh, uh, booster box opening is that the, that the box was like way too big. And I get what they were going for, card storage and stuff like that, but this just... This is kind of a blessing in disguise. It definitely gives me more room to put it on my shelf or something like that, and to put the cards in, at least in this box. And I like the front art right here. Uh, I'm guessing that's a Chrono Monster, and like it's uh, being chained up by something. Maybe that's like the chain card in the card game, and we need to play the release symmetry to uh, set the sucker free. Should we though? Let's open this box and see what cards we get from this. How appropriate is it that I'm opening a box that is starring the new monsters, uh, the Kronos monsters, on my Kronos uh, card mat, of all things. So, without further ado, and speed now. Alright, so we got the box open. Now let's see what the card toppers are. Every Exodus, oh my gosh, always has a card topper. And, oh, hello, BT. What does that mean? Beautiful trade? I have no idea. This is something new to me. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, let's see here. We've got this and okay, so we got two of our cards. I'm guessing this is the card topper that goes from the pack here and these these are going to be like the random cards that uh, you get. They're really, they're really pretty. I have no idea what this is, but I'll look at that later. But for now, let's look at these. First, I'll get this guy out. This is like, I'm guessing this is going to be the card topper for this deck. I don't know. It has like this little insignia right here called the BT. I have no idea what that means. Like, I have no idea what kind of rarity that is. It's an interesting rarity. And then we've got this guy right here. He's a tree folk. Pretty neat looking guy. Uh, I'm sure that you could see, I'm, I already know that you probably can see like this guy on the, uh, on Twitter or Facebook that they've revealed him. All right, so let's get these packs. <laughs> Ah, and I should have guessed. Okay, so instead of styrofoam, they put in like a little... Ah, you, you tricky, you tricky people, you. I'm sure maybe I can make shift this into some sort of like card divider kind of thing. Ooh, that'd actually be a cool idea. Uh, let's, um, first let's lay down the packs. We've got, let's see. And I'm gonna speed through this now. All right, so these are the new booster packs. Let's see what craziness we've got from them. So here we go with pack one. Now I'm gonna not do that much like uh, special effects for this video, beca only because like I don't know any of the new cards. Now I wonder where they're gonna put the holographic on this one. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Oh, they have a white border too. That's actually pretty cool uh, for this set. Okay, so it's a short full. Okay. A machine chrono, interesting. It looks like, okay, so like, I, I'm guessing like the holographics are gonna be like the fourth card. Okay, so here's a symmetry, that's pretty neat. And we've got a Chrono Wolf, Wander Wolf, the Inner Fear, interesting. And we got a Mush, a Mushfolk Chrono. Oh my gosh, these Chrono cards are kind of cool. But let's take a look at the holographic card on this guy, this wolf right here, that's actually pretty cool. That is a very neat card. So there's my first uh, rare uh, holographic card. Well, not my first, but from like the booster packs. Pack two, here we go. Another symmetry, here we go. Oh, oh my gosh, what the heck? Flashfire, Neb Nebulous Haze. He's a Chrono, um, well, that's a cool looking truthful. He is a Chrono Hailfire. In the, in the starter decks, uh, in the Dragon starter deck, of the first one, they mentioned the idea of a, uh, of a hail, Hailfire? of Hailfire cards, and that's a really neat one. Okay, so this is my third. This is my second uh, from the pack, pack three. Oh, here we go, here's my here's my first uh, uncommon uh, symmetry. It is called Treeforge Boardroom. Since they're not gonna have any angels in this set because there were like so many so far, and it's time for like the Kronos to shine, which makes sense. Pack four. Oh, oh we got our first uh, Chrono monster. Oh, no, not our first, what am I saying? Called Silent. Irregular, irregularity, oh my gosh. Um, Wisp of the Wind, whenever this creature goes to the graveyard, add one energy beneath your main, beneath your main deck or to the creature in play. Ignore all life point required excluding cost for your card effect and ability. Okay, so I'm sure there's like something to that effect, but still, let's see. Okay, pack five. Okay, that's new. Oh, that's huge, a sharp oak phoenix. But yeah, uh, a Chrono Crow called Roha Beautiful Nightmare. Good gosh, that's, that is terrifying. Trapped in 
Tribulation. When this creature battles, one damage carries over and hits your opponent's life points directly for each energy it has left after the battle, up to the number of afterthoughts you have in play. Kronos, you control deal one additional damage when battling opposing rare or higher creatures. Interesting. Wait a minute, so that's technical. Oh my gosh, because in the game you can't do splash damage to your opponent, but this card effect will probably let you? Ooh, that's actually interesting. Okay, so pack six. That looks so scary and cool at the same time. It's so cool. Uh, another uncommon uh, monster. And it is a machine chrono called Cravenous Scrap Hollow. That, I'm not gonna lie, that one looks pretty neat. Okay guys, pack seven. Will we get something lucky out of this or will we not? Let's see what happens. Oh, we got a rare uh, symmetry right here called Corrupted Keystone. Target one of your creatures in play without an ability. This turn, it doesn't take damage when battling an opposing creature. Ooh, that's an interesting card right there. So if like you were going for a deck that didn't need monsters with effects, you can play that and they pretty much can run over anybody else. That's an interesting idea of a card concept. Pack number eight. Oh, Chivalry uh, of the Wilds. Oh, oh I've got, <laughs> I got its holographic, I got its holographic form and it's non-holographic form. What does it say? We'll pay one frozen energy. This turn, your common and uncommon sh shard folk and their energy cannot leave play due to opposing effects and abilities. Doesn't say battle, but like if there was anybody who's gonna try to get rid of them with an effect, this symmetry would pretty much stop them. That's interesting. Pack nine, we're almost done. Oh my. Gracious, what is this thing? It's a sim- Dear! Oh my gosh! Okay, before we talk about this, look at that! Look at the eyes! It's a Leviathan Chrono, and that is terrifying! That is actually really goodly scary! I'm surprised this didn't come out during Halloween. This would be the perfect time for this kind of thing to be out. Anyway, let's look at this one. Thoughtstream Evertide Sword. Okay, so what do you do? Destroy one of uh, your creatures and all the energy attached. Then destroy all cards in the field, except energy, that don't have any energy attached. If any cards left a player's field due to this effect, that player loses one life point. I'm not gonna lie, guys. This is, uh... That's an interesting symmetry. I still need to probably look that up and figure out what that's about. Uh, we're on pack 10. Oh, there's that machine again. And a cro Ooh, a chrono sl slither. Interesting. All right, let's see. Uh, encased rune rock. Pay one energy, target one creature or energy in play and freeze it. You may pay another energy if you do. You may pay another energy. If you do additional tar additionally target one creature or energy in play and permanently freeze it. Okay, that's a pretty cool card. Here's pack number 11. Dear gracious. Okay, it's a symmetry. I know that, but good gosh. Oh, that's cute. All right, so. Aroda's S. Oh, Aroda's Ascendance? Is that what that says? Half of your life points rounded down. Send all cards in your main deck to the graveyard. Then you may summon um, Aroda the Flickering Facade and or Devour of Dimensions from your hand or graveyard. If possible, if you do, you may move your afterthoughts underneath it. Afterthoughts turn into Kronos. Opposing creatures and pot. Oh my gosh, what? I have no idea who Eroda. Oh my gosh, this happened before with me and uh, and Roxanne. Now I need to know who those two other uh, uh, creatures are. They sound like very powerful Chrono monsters. Oh my gosh, this is trippy. All right, last pack, guys. Pack number twelve. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, that's a pretty cool looking uh, symmetry. Cryogenic Criterion. Target one energy on each field each side of the field and freeze them. Then all opposing afterthought abilities become inactive for the rest of the turn. So this would probably be good for uh, a short folk deck that was going against, against Kronos, that's interesting. So apparently there's a new effect called afterthought abilities. That's interesting. That's probably something I'll read up. You know what, that's probably something I'll read up right now. I've got the card right here, let's see what it is. And oh, I'm reading the continue side, let's see. Afterthought mechanic and ruling. Chrono creatures with the afterthought symbol have an have an afterthought ability, usually in addition, usually in addition to their regular ability. Afterthought ability doesn't become active until the player actually chooses to change it from creature into an afterthought. How do you change a chrono into an afterthought? Whenever a chrono would leave play the field, you may change it into an afterthought. This means the card type is no longer considered a creature, it is now an afterthought. 
By default, the symbol should be read as the following. When this creature leaves play, you may change it from a creature into an afterthought. That is terrifying. If you do, keep it face up on the field without energy and its afterthought ability becomes active. If an afterthought leaves play, it automatically changes back into a creature. Since creatures can't exist on the field with energy, afterthoughts are easily spotted on the field without energy. Everywhere everywhere else such as the everywhere else such as the hand, deck, or graveyard, they are treated as creature cards as usual. Oh my gosh, the thought the thought stream is nowhere to be seen inside the dimension that disappeared. So Kronos Essence can linger on the battlefield long after being destroyed in the form of an afterthought. Oh my gosh. So if I have creatures that have that symbol, that have like this symbol right here, if I could just get that close enough for a freeze frame. If you see that on one of your Kronos cards, it, it, when it leaves the field, it'll become an afterthought ability. That is, wow, the new mechanics for this, the new mechanics for this one is trippy. And so, there you have it, folks. These are the new uh, cards of the uh, new booster pack, the Dimension That Disappeared. Guys, I highly recommend this if you're an Exodus player. And if you were just as curious about the Kronos monsters, here you go. These, this is a whole new game mechanic next to the whole Frozen effect or the reveal effect. Uh, the frozen effect by the shard folks and the reveal effect by the tree folks and mush folks still This is actually an interesting concept. I love it. Yeah, please guys go check this out. Please uh, go check out their uh, uh, Go check out their website buy the booster box. I will definitely do this again uh, Next time now. I was originally gonna go buy a box of like um, a 12 box set of booster boxes and have my friends come over to do this, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to change plans and keep going through this over and over again to see what kind of cards I'll get. And also wait on for them to release the, the finished uh, pictured products on their site so that way I can like get them, get them down so that way you can get a better visual of them. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next Exodus Booster Box opening. And um, by the way, what did you think of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Booster Box opening that I did last time? Did you like it? Did you want me to do more stuff like that? Tell you what, we'll make a goal out of this. If I can get 100 likes on this video, I'll do another uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Booster, uh, booster Pack Box opening. And if you want me to open uh, probably more Exodus uh, Booster Boxes, uh, leave maybe like 200 likes. I don't know. I'm just, I'm being greedy right now. But with that said and done, guys, may God bless and just have a good day. I'm telling people God bless and I'm being greedy with the likes for my videos.